Tio please. Hey there, this is Tio bringing another Kerbal Space Program video. So in my last video, I showed you guys how I used the Kerbnet to detect an anomaly on the surface of Kerbin, which happened to be just down the coast from the Kerbal Space Center. So I get to use one of my favorite features of KSP, which is the space plane hangar. I built this jet, which was actually going to appear in another series that I've been working on. I'm going to send this to Lathe, but uh, this was well, like a perfect reason to use uh, such a vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and show it off now. It's, uh, um, as you can see, a twin engine. It's got two of those uh, jet engines that have afterburners, so I can get a little bit extra thrust if I need to take off from a, a small space or uh, you know do some really really quick maneuvers but uh it's mainly designed for uh, range should have a pretty decent range without those afterburners and it's also designed for its uh its payload and payload delivery so that's something i'm really excited to show off here <clears throat> i've got a, a small crew should be pilot and engineer it's actually been a little while since this footage is recorded and uh, i haven't rewatched the footage just so that I can be just as surprised as you when I <laughs> go through the mission and things happen that I don't recall filming. But uh, I do recall touching down on the beach here. So as soon as I got closer to this anomaly, I realized what it must be. And I was very excited about it. So I had actually forgotten about this place. And um, having now visited it in game, I have unlocked it. So as the name of the video implies, this is a launch site. This is the Cove launch site, and you can only unlock it once you've uh, flown in the vicinity of it, once you've um, actually found it. So um, I think there's, all the launch sites have that same requirement. So here's the, uh, the big surprise. The back of the plane hinges open, and I've got a couple struts that are helping me hold this little rover that's going to be extended by a piston, and that's what the engineer's role in this uh, mission is going to be. To reattach those struts once the vehicle's back in and that's just to stop the rover from flopping around during flight um, it'll it'll actually clip through the sides of the plane and it looks very weird so um, in reality if you had a payload like that you'd want to secure it so i've brought my engineer on board and he's going to reattach those struts once the rover is finished with this next part of the mission mission which is giving the pilot or engineer whoever i've selected the ability to get to the target uh, much more precisely and quickly and safety, safely so the plane can, can land in a flat space and the rover can take the, the uh, passenger to their final destination. So pretty clean, basic little rover design. Uh, rovers can be tricky, so you need to make sure that your uh, control point is facing forward. I find it's nice if the, uh, the rear wheels are locked and don't, don't, uh, don't turn and leave your front wheels to turn. You also have to make sure your SAS is disabled or it's set to um, one of the settings. I think you have to, you can, you can talk, you can either turn it completely off or you can set it so that it, uh, it only works when SAS is turned on when actual, whenever you press the, uh, the right key on the keyboard. So anyway, if, once you work out those kinks, rovers are not that bad to drive. So uh, and for whatever reason, I guess I don't drive them that often enough that sometimes I just forget. So when they start acting squarely, you can play with those settings. Um, and so as you see, I have a, a, a solar panel just to recharge my batteries. Um, I, I hope in KSP2, which the uh, early access was announced, by the way, in February. I know what I'll be doing in February. Hopefully in KSP2, they'll give us air breathing engines suitable for producing electricity and um, maybe even driving wheels more efficiently on Kerbin than some of these electronics can do. So... Um, if you're going to have a rover on the sur surface of Kerbin, you either have to use solar panels or an RTG, which is kind of unrealistic, or you could use uh, a fuel tank with uh, a fuel cell, but uh, none of those seem like great options. So I tend to just slap on a lot of batteries, and usually that'll last an entire mission. But uh, you do eventually run out of charge, so you need a way to recharge those batteries. But anyway, this is going to be a quick mission. So uh, because, like I said, I'll be sending this vehicle to, to lay maybe in another series uh, that rover could be out on the surface of lathe for an extended period of time so it's got its own solar panel i can open it and use it if i need so here's the uh the cove launch launch site i guess i should have said if you haven't unlocked this and don't want to uh, 
uh, don't want me to spoil it for you. Turn off the video now, but uh, it's pretty pretty simple little place. Uh, from what I understand, you don't, you know, just like the, the KSC, you don't really utilize any of these facilities for anything except for the actual launch pad. So uh, what seems really cool about this launch pad is it is on the beach. So if you were to create a submarine or a boat or something like that, you don't have to go through too much trouble to get it into the water. You can build a pretty basic rover external frame that would roll the, the, the vehicle into the water and then detach. Uh, previously, if I wanted to put something in the water, that rover had to be pretty robust to get all the way from the starting point of the, the uh, either the launch pad or the uh, runway all the way into the water. There's, there's inclines and slopes and you know, grades and all that. So anyway, this would be, obviously it's got a ramp. So this is, this is in my mind, designed pretty much to get things into the water if you wanted to create a, a, a watercraft. But got to go in for a swim because why not i can and yeah like i said I, I was really excited when i found this i actually haven't used the cove launch site since recording this video uh, partially because i forgot about it again <laughs> and also because I, I i've done some water builds in the past and fought through the the struggles and enjoyed the vehicles and i kind of got it out of my system i'm sure at some point again i'll i'll make another efficient submarine maybe something i can send the lathe for that series that i'm working on but uh yeah, so for the rest of the video, it's showing off the capabilities of this plane. I really enjoy um, using the space plane hangar to make jets these days. Sometimes I'll hop on a sandbox for, for 15 minutes, throw together a plane that has some kind of quirk or unique feature, and um, that, that's, that's my relaxation time lately. Uh, but some of those designs make it into these videos, and this is one such design. So it flies really well. As you saw, I used the engineer to attach the struts takes off with pretty uh with, with not a whole lot of runway required and got all the range that i'll ever need so hope you enjoyed the video that's uh, one of the anomalies that i've found on the surface of kerbin it's actually i think the first one uh, i found some others without using kerbnet but this was the first using kerbnet so i call that a mission success hope you enjoyed the video if you got anything out of it please hit the like button or subscribe i appreciate you for tuning in and i hope to see you next time